I'm not, I don't have a bad thing to say about LA. LA served the purpose for me. That's right. And I know, listen, I thought about moving to different places, mm-hmm. Northern California. I thought about moving to Reno. Yeah, that's what she said. I thought about going back to Colorado, like yeah. go towards Telluride. Yeah. But then the pandemic came. Yeah. And the pandemic came with just like this weird feeling to it. Yeah. It just wasn't, it's like right now. You know, I was. We were talking Monday about the things you never want to think about. You never want to, when you're down two hundred thousand, like mm. when you owe two hundred thousand, mm. and you say to yourself, "How am I going to pay this debt?" Mm. And you go, "I'm mm. never going to pay." It. I don't even want to think about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same thing right now. I <laughs> yeah. think, I think America, I think the world right now, we're not in a good place. I agree. You know, between inflation, the numbers are going back up. All this shit, we're not in a good place, and we have a war going on with a guy that anything could happen. And if you think about how this is going to end, it's the same thing as owing $200,000. You don't want to so you don't want to think, think about, about it. There's you know? so many things you can There's say. There's so many variables right, right, right now. That's right. You know, that's right. So I, I and just, every one of those arguments, sorry to interrupt you, but every one of those sort of topics is being taken over by folks that just want to get you on their side or the other side. They just want to make it so, hey, I, I, I'm with these these guys or these guys. They just want to wave their fucking flags from the sidelines. And, 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 and that makes it so you never actually face the issues. You're never actually talking to people of real experience in the fucking issues. We're talking to the wrong fucking people. The wrong people got the mic. You know, I don't know the issues. I just have, I go by feeling. Yeah. And I go by the direction the wind is going, blowing. Yeah. I mean, I think this is the calm before the storm. Yeah. For some reason, yeah. I just, we were talking on Monday about, you know, how we're worried about our children. That's right. What, what world are our children going to go into? You know, all I ever wanted was to have a child with this woman. Mm. And now, are our children going to be able to buy a house? Yeah. yeah. Are our children going to be able to have the same things we had? Yeah. Who the fuck knows? Yeah. yeah. But this is what, you know, you have to think about or not think about yeah. and move on. That's but it's right. a different world right now. It's a now. different world. But when you got kids, it is, you, you know, really loving, really understanding what it's like to love somebody more than you love yourself and not give a fuck what happens to you, but you just want to throw it down for that kid. The only reason you're on this earth is for that kid. And, and it's crazy to actually face the fact that, like, you might be leaving them a world that's worse off than you came in. You think about all the things you had as a kid. You're like, wow, my my kid, I don't, I don't, I don't, they can't really experience that. You know, like, I don't know. And I'm sure, like, you know, I was walking through New York, you, you know, I'm doing down, you know, down here for press, and I was thinking about, man, can you imagine New York in the 70s and the 80s? You know, and you always think, think how much better it was. And I remember what it was like 10 years ago, 20 years ago, the fucking energy, the palpability of anything could happen at anything, any fucking anything. moment and just how electric that was. And there was that, that, that feeling, you know, if you can make it here, you can fucking make it any, I don't care what you do, but I remember pounding the fucking pavement as an actor thinking I didn't have a fucking hope in the world, but I just keep on grinding, keep on pounding. The electricity fueled me. But now you're like, you see it and you're like, wow, like what are these... What are these kids coming up seeing? You know, like everyone's on their fucking phones. But, you know, then again, you, maybe you're just like, hey, look, I'm just an old fuck. Like every other miserable old fuck from every other generation who thinks that, like, you know, kids today don't don't know anything and they're missing out on anything. And, and I don't know if that's just part about life and getting older. I don't want to be that old fuck. Me neither. You, know, you don't ever want to. My day. We and the electricity uh, 10, yeah. 20 years ago yeah. in New York, that shit ain't. Th- like, I, you know, I was out last night in New York. No. It's cool, it's but that cool. ain't what it was fucking 10, no. 20 years ago. No, and you should have had it in the 80s. I can only imagine. When it was like a paradise yeah. to go over yeah. there, yeah. you know, living here, and yeah. especially where I lived. I yeah. lived eight minutes from the city. Right. So it was dessert. Right, right. <laughs> it was always dessert. Right. Like, we did this in Jersey. Can you imagine what we're going to do in New York at 3 a.m.? Mm. Let's just go over there, get a case of beer, and see where the fucking, where the night takes us. You know, yeah. New York was a fucking great place. I'm, like, I'm too old, but I wish I could have done a play. Yeah. Like, and put all that time you have to in a play yeah. and not worry about money. But you could do that, Joe. Time. You could still do that. You know, bro, I got a fucking, my agent fucking uh, reached out to me last week. Yeah. You're not going to believe this. She yeah. goes, I sent this uh, department, all my actors, and the only one they wanted to see was you. Fuck yeah. It's to go up to Yale on Monday. To yeah. Yale rep? To Yale, the college, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do a table read at the David Geffen 
arena or something. That's the, yeah, it's a great theater. Go no fucking shit. do that. Go fucking you know, do I'm, that. I'm gonna do it next time. Joe, you I would said, crush theater, and I'm telling you, man, that is where the big boys go, man. Fuck all this on camera shit. I mean, it's like great. We do it, whatever. No second takes. No nothing. Like th think with you and your background, what you're able to do, like no other comic in the world. You on stage and your acting ability, it would be a fucking revolution. I would revolution. love to do. I would love to do. I, I would always, love to do a play with you. Man. I always want. Like I'm thinking. I've been talking to Vince Pastor, pussy. Yeah. Yeah, about course, doing uh, the one about the butcher. Oh, uh, no, no, Requiem for a Dream. Requiem for a Dream. First, and then the one about the butcher, with the ugly butcher that falls in love with the good-looking chick played by Ernest Borgnine. We always read it in, in acting class. Acting class. I yeah. forget what the fuck, Sam or something like that. Yeah. Who the fuck knows? Sweeney no, 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 it's not Sweeney, not Sweeney fucking Todd. Todd. No, 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 Do no, I look no. like Sweeney Todd no, to no, you? No, no, no. But I, I, I always felt... <laughs> Like, I always felt, when you're a stand-up, you feel very insecure on a set. Sure. But then, again, you know, like, I got an audition the other day, and they, I looked at, you know, you always look at shit. And I could tell by reading the audition that it was a fucking hand job. You mm -hmm. know, it, was, it gave you too much information. And then I saw who's in the movie, who casted themselves in the movie already. It's a husband and wife team. His rating on IMDb is 400,000. And hers is like 600,000. Mm, mm. So they want me to read for this movie. I go, and my wife was looking at it at the phone. I go, it says SAG scale, but trust me, there's a by the way there. You could tell just yeah, how by they send it to you. And sure enough, on the bottom, she goes, yeah, it's still waiting for SAG after approval. I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. fuck them, because they just want to. So when you're in a movie, you have a lot of those things. You have a lot of people that just cast themselves or whatever. But I think in theater, those are the high level fucking Straight people. Up. Straight, especially at a place like that. Too. Especially, you know, yeah. so you kind of get. But this was Yale. They were going to give me two hundred and ten dollars. Yeah, I yeah. There's take, no money. There's no, no money. In I there. was taking a train out of Penn Station, but then taking an Uber home. Yeah. Yeah. From Yale. That two hundred and ten dollars is for that Uber. A New Haven, yeah, Connecticut no or something like that. Yeah, straight up. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah. So they just wanted me to do the table read. So next time they do contact me, I will go up there. Yeah, I think you should. I, that, I would great. love to. That's great. But I don't know if I could do those eighty hour fucking rehearsals, man. But you know what? Like it's I don't know, rehearsal's fucking heaven. It's it's fucking heaven. It's where you can try anything. That's how you grow. You know, it's like all it, it's like getting it's like getting allotted time to work on your set, but with other people, you know what I mean? With other people inspiring you and challenging you and chant. There's nothing in the world like rehearsal. I, I fucking live for it. Anything can happen in rehearsal. You're there to take risks. You're there to fail. You're there to fuck up. Like, when else you get to do that as an artist? Like, you, it's like, look, I'm sure you have your own way of working on what you work on and you have your own method for, for your comedy, right? But for an actor, it's like, we got to, like, carve out our fucking time to put our work in. But this is determined set, you know, eight, nine, ten hour days where everyone's got to fucking be there. You've got to be on stage and everyone's throwing down.